as the ball is held aloft, umpires Howlett, Coates and Nash are in charge of proceedings. It's Sydney going to the right of screen with Greg Stafford. Peter Everett hoping to get the Sainters underway. But it's Stafford who wins it out of the middle. They push it wide. It's socket up the ground by Harvey. Down towards the centre wing, towards this wide flank. And it's there that Kelly sees it over the line with the aid of Luke Beveridge. Come out of defence. Nicks up towards centre wing. Arnott recovers after dropping the mark to centre half forward. is right in front, 45 metres from goal. It's interesting, in that defence, Zilla is actually maxed up against Arnott. Arnott's got the height advantage in that duel, and uh, Zilla will be OK at ground level, but uh, will trouble him in the air, will Arnott? Mark Bayes kicked six goals last week, and that wasn't the most authoritative of kicks, away to the left and through for a minor score. Justin Peckett will bring it back into play. Goes to the outer side. That's okay. Finds Jamie Shanahan. The likeable defender tucked in the back pocket. His very wide pockets. Once again, this time it's Tony Brown. And he looks in towards the middle where Peter Everett is lurking. Lee, how do you see these two sides matching up? Relatively even? Well, I think so. I mean, they've got marking power in the forward line. St Kilda, the Everett uh, situation against Stafford is going to be really interesting to see how that evolves. Ozzy Jones firing away to the right, producing a behind. The level of scores. Crowd relatively quiet at the moment. But sitting with great anticipation. Stafford and Everett. Dunkley there also. Jones at the back. Cook in the front. Gets the kick. Down towards right half forward. Jason Daniels couldn't take it. Here's the speed stop by Clay Lachlan. Gets caught. Well done by Jack Daniels. He persisted. He chased and he got him. And Stephen Zilla sees it over the line. On the full. He'll bring it back into play. We see there that pairing, uh, Daniels against O'Loughlin, will be a big job if Daniels can hold him. That'll be a long, uh, a big plus for St Kilda. Saints work it down the outer side of the ground. It sits well for Thompson. He's kicked towards centre half forward. Heatley gets underneath the ball. Drop mark down there by Seymour. Dunkley back to chop off the hand pass. Back to Ruse. Ruse, they say. It's not booing. It sounds like a boo. Out the centre wing. Maxfield beaten by Thompson. What a first season this bloke's had. Kick by Thompson, well inside 50, Stewie Lowe. And a chance for the first goal of the game. Well, they, Stewie missed a couple from the goal square last week, so uh, be no certainty. They are strong hands, aren't they? When he jumps and he gets both hands on the ball, you can forget about the spoil. He's got it. Uh, this is the morale booster that St Kilda need. He's got a shot from probably 25 metres. Often talked about Stuart Lowe's erratic kicking for goal. An enormous plus if he can kick this online just to get the scoreboard ticking for the visiting team. Stewie Lowe from 35 metres has goal. So Stuart Lowe gets his 41st goal for the season, and Nathan Burke pumps the Saints into attack again down towards the man in question, Stuart Lowe. Couldn't take it cleanly. Nick's initiated the first hand pass and finishes with Ruse. Orchard wants it and he gets it on half back. Good start by St Kilda. Orchard's kick is wide. Stephen Carey is going to play a big part in this game. Now Creswell near centre wing. Floats the hand pass over. Maxfield takes it and evades Lappin. Beautiful kick by Maxfield to full forward. A push yeah. against Peckett. Swans free. And Justin Peckett, who's had a terrific season. It was good play by Barry. He just held his ground, pushed back hard. And Peckett uh, used both the forearms, John, by the look of it, just to no doubt at all. ease him under the ball. <laughs> just to push him out of the way so as he had a one-out contest running back onto it. Clear free kick. So Leo Barry kicking for goal. Kick from only about 25 metres. This to level the scores. And the Swans' first goal. Good kick. So 
So the boy from Daniloquin gets Sydney's first goal. Leo Barry, Stafford and Everett at it once again. Everett, a three attempt, but straight down towards O'Loughlin and Cook. O'Loughlin goes again for a third time. Beveridge crunched to the ground by Cook. And a free kick will go his way at centre-half ball. Interesting, just quickly, Sandy, down in the Swans forward line, now Barry and Arnold have got the height advantage on Silla and Peckett. And at the moment, they've been put in as the full forward line marker. Good coaching by Rodney Eade. Snap by Wakeland is wide. After that spilled mark, could have proved costly. It didn't. And Sydney fans breathe a sigh of relief. Here in force today, but St Kilda also too has great support. It's a sea of red, black and white. Great sight. Sydney defence working hard and eventually it's taken over the line by Matthew Nix in his 22nd game. Just to continue that point, yeah, it's basically putting the defenders where they don't want to be. Peckett and Zillow are basically small defenders, but the Swans haven't played any small forwards at the moment. So he'll be interesting to see how this Barry situation and aren't at the two marking players, basically medium-sized marking players against the two smaller players in Peckett and Zillow. Stafford is again the target. Everett is right there with him. They need someone waiting down, but it's Robert Harvey across to Nicky Winmar. Winmar bends it back in towards goal, but not far enough. Another behind. I must say this game and these conditions are made for quick running across the ground. And I think this is one of some killed the strength already. They look pretty quick, ground level. Kelly looking to get into the game. Everett leaves it for Winmar, who scoops it up magnificently with the one hand down towards Burke. He's under pressure, gets the hand pass away. Kelly's uh, flick goes straight back over towards Burke, but his kick drops short. And again, the Sydney defence will be able to bring it away. This is Nix in towards the middle. He wants Greg Stafford. He's got Darren Creswell going past. This should be a goal here. We go short and a little erratically too down into that forward line. O'Loughlin has the chance. He's got players screaming oh. for it. Creswell's on his own. Cruz into goal, Dazard. And he does. Hasn't missed a game this year, and he's just popped through his 11th goal for the season. Well, you've got to run forward and you've got to run back. It was interesting that Everett was hanging around St Kilda's half-forward line. Stafford got, the, Stafford got the ball in midfield. We see Creswell still in the bottom of the screen, and Harvey, his direct opponent, but just didn't push back hard enough. And Creswell kept going. The Swans maintained possession. Creswell kicks the goal, so Robert Harvey has to be prepared to run back as hard as he runs forward. So Sydney have taken the lead with that goal. Margin, four points. Perfect conditions at the SCG. Bad bounce, baby. Stafford belts it out of the square. Bit of a fumble there by Mooney. And they've lost the advantage they started with. Cook rides the bump, gets the hand pass out. Stevens back to Mooney. Here's the brown line medalist, Kelly. High ball. Out slightly off the side of his boot. Punch out of defence by Zilla. And the ball over the boundary line. Safely out of bounds at the 50. And with the uh, setup that the Swans have on the forward line, Jamie Shanahan, who's used to playing at full back, has been drifting up the ground. Following his man, has been nowhere near uh, the defensive 50. Here's Beveridge. Floats a hand pass to Burke. Taps on for Jones, who had four kicks early but sprayed them, one for a behind and one out of bounds. And that was a point I was mentioning before, that in fact Mooney is just running up the ground to take Shanahan up to play as a running type half forward. Get Shanahan away from his comfort position at the true fullback spot. Everett, but a fumble by Burke, allows Kelly in. Centering handball. Sirikoski, centre half back for the Saints. Beautiful hand pass. To Brown on the cricket pitch area. Brown gets rid of the kick towards full forward. Heatley! Jason Heatley, who's the leading goal kicker for the Saints this year with 47, needs three today for his half century. Perfect conditions for goal kicking. He'll be kicking from just inside the 50, or about the 50. Hooks it badly. Got the distance with plenty to spare. And a bad miss for a full forward. It was a bad miss. They needed that. And the uh, positional, positional cat and mouse goes on. Nathan Burke has now gone back to play on Arnott on the last line defence. And Zilla has come up to pick up 
uh, Kelly. So I think Stan Ells wasn't uh, too keen on these two smallest defenders being isolated back there. Kelly brings it back in, a short kick to himself, and then he goes for more distance towards Paul Roos, who just about held that. In fact, it's going to be paid. And John can't play on from the marking contest? We can't call advantage from a marking contest. Paul Roos can elect to play on, but if the ball ends up in the possession of another player, the umpire can't cancel the mark and call play on. 332nd game. Marvellous achievement by Roos. And now Orchard towards right half forward. A big pack of players. Almost the one-hander pulled down at the back by Mark Bays, but it's going to be a free kick and it's going to go the way of St Kilda. Here's Beveridge. He takes it towards the centre wing. Wakeland looking to hold front spot in opposition to Ruse. Takes the mark, rides the bump, and he'll have it at the centre wing. This is Shane. He's only a couple away from his half century, too. Across to Robert Harvey, who looks in towards Heatley territory. A little too far. Oops. Spillage oh. by Dunkley. And then he's given it away towards Laffin, whose shot at goal is again away to the right. <laughs> 2-1 plays at 1-5. Pretty frantic start. What do you think, Dale? Yeah, it's uh, been a wild start by both sides. I think it's imperative that St Kilda try and quell our sort of uh, run at the start because we've had such good starts in the last two weeks. Swan's made a change. Troy Cook off with just two touches. Ben Matthews goes on to Brown. Ball at centre wing. Holding the man paid, Drew. Jason Daniels making a return to St Kilda last week. Started with the Saints, came to Sydney and returned to St Kilda. Creswell with the free from centre wing. Sirikoski puts on the pressure. The ball gets through to the back. And the hand pass back. Mooney's kick set up high. Oh, the mark right in front for Barry. And again, this situation we've spoken about. Barry is a medium-sized marking player against Peckett, who is a small, crumbling type defender. Uh, uh, Stan Ells has tried to uh, redress the situation a bit, but in the one-on-one -on -one marking contest, Barry is really going to trouble Peckett. Well, he's already kicked one. The Swans have two goals, one to a wasteful St Kilda, who are 1-5. Sydney lead by two points. It can be eight from this if Barry can convert from right in front, 45 metres out. Oh, they say behind the goals for a hook shot. And uh, St Kilda have got Jason Cripps on the bench at the moment on interchange. Wouldn't be surprised if they were thinking that his extra height may make him a better option down there then peck it at this stage of the game in that direct contest against Barry. Peckett thinks about his short options and eventually takes one in Harvey. Very short. Over the top to Brown and now they're away, the Saints. To the outer side, Lappin leads in the race and he's got good support from Stuart Lowe but he's certainly going to need it because a wharf is there, he floats the hand pass back to Stewie Maxfield. He's got the player going past. Here comes Sydney again through Creswell up towards O'Loughlin. Gave a shove as he went to take that spectacular mark. The attempt was there, but the mark not. Harvey again towards Winmar. Who's going to be first to recover? Nicky Winmar could have caught one in the back. No, says the umpire, and there'll be another bounce. In that situation, Sandy, it'd be very difficult for Dave Howlett to pay a free kick for in the back because he was actually behind... The umpire's directly behind Nicky Winmar here, so he really wouldn't be sure whether there was actually uh, impact with Nicky Winmar's back from behind the contest. Still on centre wing. Everett manoeuvres himself well. Beveridge, lightning hand pass towards Brown. St Kilda now into attack. The left footer by Tony Brown. Down towards Wakeman on a left half forward and taken over. Well, they've come dressed in all sorts of fashions here this afternoon. I tell you, if it wasn't a record crowd at the start of the game, it might be by quarter time. They're still filing in. Kick it. Stewie Maxfield goes all the way. His left footer is good. Great goal, Stewie Maxfield. Well, that's five scoring shots to six, but... Sydney lead by nine points. Yes, when Sydney have gone forward, I mentioned Kilda have had a few shots that have been uh, certainly no more difficult than this, and they've missed them. But Maxfield, he's round, but he balances. His last two or three steps, he just holds his momentum back, gets his full balance, and then is able to kick accurately. So it was well done. Strong running, good kicking. Stewie Maxfield gets his ninth goal for the season, his first for the day, and it's a nine-point margin. Now to the home side as the 
closing stages of the first quarter unfold. They've got a chance to go forward again through Orchard, down towards the right half forward. The kick, however, on this occasion is wide. Out on the full. David Sirikowski brings it back into play. Now he's gone laterally. Found Jamie Shanahan. Peckett peels off for him on the other side of the ground. Away from Leo Barry, and he's got him. Daniels wants it wide. Wakeland wants it short. Thompson back towards the middle. But instead, he comes back to Jamie Shanahan. Who this time hits towards Thompson territory. He is absolutely crunched. So too was Creswell. The ball spills free. A hurried kick goes down towards Paul Roos, who gets the favourable bounce and sneaks a lightning low hand pass that spilled out and stopped the run. High tackle paid. Difficult to tell from here, but uh, high tackle's been paid by Mark Nash. So Lachlan and Cook back on for Matthews. I think he was only off just to uh, so Rodney Yu could actually have a little word in his ear. Now Lachlan drops back. Wharf elects to go short. It's not short enough. Cry of ball as it's locked up. And a good tackle by the youngster there in Ben Matthews. Forcing a bounce. Matthews in just his fourth game from Coral Rutherglen. Glen. And then we've got under six minutes remaining in this first quarter. I think it might have been Arnott who came off then for Cook. So changing the balance, perhaps for the Swans. Daniels goes to ground. The hand pass back to Zilla. A very high ball to centre half forward. Low is there. Comes to the front. Fumbled by Beveridge back in the pack. Lappin with silky skills. Whistle's gone. And it's a St Kilda free kick right in front on the 50 to Luke Beveridge. Signal given for over the shoulder then. So uh, that's obviously what David Hell has paid it for. Sydney 20. Leeds St Kilda 11. Beveridge would struggle with the distance. It's away to the right. And Paul Roos takes the mark. Three marks to Roos and coming up for his sixth disposal. Goes by hand to Dunkley. Dunkley's kick. Well, <laughs> fancy finding a man so clearly in the clear. Ryan Moore. Towards centre half forward. Lays up early. Punch by Shanahan. A lockin' for the Swans. 40 out. 30. A lockin' for goal. No problem. Well, that's just class finishing. He got the, the correct crumbing position at the front of the pack. St Kilda defence, Shanahan scored well, all initiated by the ruse, saving Mark, and then it was a, just a scungy kick, wasn't it, by Dunkley, but it drifted into the hands of Wolf. But it's again, the front position is always the correct crumbing spot. He got there, O'Loughlin, burst clear and pace and kick and goal with good effort. One of the real excitement machines of the game, Michael O'Loughlin. Goal number 20 for him this year. And St Kilda apply. Winmar hopes so as he gives it across to Burke. Another one to Robert Harvey from 47 metres. Harvey goes home and he gets it. That's what they needed. Well, they certainly did. That's an understatement. They haven't played too bad, St Kilda, but uh, the Swans were getting away on the score. But it was interesting. Uh, the Swans just dropped one of those things they do in the centre bounce. Uh, where the big fella Mooney has gone in. No, not Mooney. Who was it? Uh, Baza. One of the big fellas has gone in and uh, Stafford pulls clear of the ruck work. But on that occasion, it didn't work because the St Kilda players got first hands on the ball at ground level. Well, Robert Harvey, they say, hasn't really kicked as many goals as he should have in his career, but he might have a chance today on a short ground. Bursting out of the centre, you're pretty close to goal by the time you take a few steps. Bays yeah. his hand pass inside the attacking 50. Wakeland gets back. Flash of bodies down goes Kelly. Cook has won a reprieve from the coach. The hand pass missed the target. Stevens lost it. Little pop up hand pass. And the ball's blocked up until Cook comes clear. Kelly yeah. caught in a great tackle. Sirikoski the tackler. The ball spills free. From Cripps it goes to Winmar. Now Burke, and a chance for the Saints to rebound. Everett on the 50. Well done, Stafford. But it was uh, Andrew Dunkley who used his body and took a terrific mark when Everett looked as though he had his name all over it. Ruse, short pass, and O'Loughlin marks on centre wing. Ruse, ninth position already. O'Loughlin, too, has had a pretty good first quarter. Bays in front of the eyes, but a long way from home. 
is unfolding to be a very good game. Barry, did he give a shove? The umpire says no. So Leo Barry is going to be on a tight angle. He improves it. He bends it back and up goes a sea of red and white. Barry gets his second. And Sydney at the moment, Lee, having the answer. I think very poor play by Serikoski. Here we see here that Serikoski could feel Barry's presence in his back, but he took the dive. And once you took the dive, you're out of the contest. The umpire called play on. Fair enough from where I looked as well. I don't know what you saw about, thought about that one, John. But there's no point playing for the free kick and putting yourself out of the contest. That's what Serikoski did. He did right. Looking from on high from the Whitman's light ship. We see the two swans ruckman. Which one's going to contest? This time Stafford goes. Well, Everett beat him anyway. Burke's kick smothered. Whipped over his head by Maxfield. A chance here for Mooney. He runs inside 50. Raking kicks. Wings back for a goal. Well... The Swans already six goals to two, and they flogged Melbourne in the first quarter of an hour last week, and uh, well, it's a handy break if against you can the Saints. If you can pull the ball out of the centre bounce and run through the front of the centre square, well, you've got a shot at goal. And the Swans will always try and open up the front of their centre square. Both sides are trying to do that. A bit of Russian roulette, really. This time, the Swans were the ones who came out, and they're the one who set up the goal-scoring opportunity. We can see at the front of both centre squares, not a player to be seen. 38 plays 17. Margin out to 21 points. One again by Stafford, and there he is. Moody. Some holding on there, and it's got to be a Sydney free kick. You can see the jumper uh, for the skipper being held. Well, I must say, how many we've been playing about 20 minutes of the game or thereabouts, and uh, the Sydney, the Swans forward line has changed constantly about every 30 seconds the constant rotation of players in different parts of the forward line their best first quarter against St Kilda has been 8-4 this flat looking punt is going to bring them closer to that Sydney get their 7 and this is where I think St Kilda have to think about just to stabilise the game to get even a loose play on the back of the centre square because if you come through the centre square there it's just completely opened up as we see no one is near the centre half forward position on either side so then it becomes who's going to clear it out of the centre bounce and so far the Swans have just done it better Captain Paul Kelly getting his first goal seven goals to two and a very handy break for the home side Everett wins. Thompson's hand pass to Winmar. Drags it in on the fingertips. Good hand pass to Brown. Over the top he goes to Lowe. 25 metres out. Stewie Lowe. Hooked it too much and missed. Well, Dale Lewis, you must have been wrapped with the start against Melbourne last week. This is nearly as good. Yeah, Drew, it's, uh, the boys have jumped out well. I think, as Lee was saying, I think we're starting to dominate through the midfield, and especially the centre bounces, and uh, the forwards are first to move, and we're kicking goals for a change. Well, Thompson repels and kicks for goal and floats it through, so St Kilda closed the gap. Good goal by Andrew Thompson, his eighth for the season. It was just really the kicking situation. Two Swans players up. The ground level players Thompson at certainly the fortuitous bounce, uh, but I think St Kilda will take anything at the moment because uh, the Swans blitzkrieg in the last five minutes has really blown the game open. Forest of legs there, hard to understand how the ball got through. And it's interesting at this centre bounce, there was only three players, three pairs of players forward of centre in the Swans forward half. Everett goes up and beats Stafford. Hand pass to Brown. They've lost control of it. Matthews. Up towards full forward. Comes to ground, another chance for Sydney here. Zilla, a lightning hand pass. Shanahan, they're under pressure. He's kicked it backwards, Jamie Shanahan, and almost out on the full. Oh. Yes, I mentioned there's just so, been so many changes in the Swans forward half. They've been rotating their players, they've been dropping different players in there. It's really kept the St Kilda defence off balance, really, at the moment. They're, they're players their opponents are constantly changing and all the initiative and momentum is with the swans a couple of minutes remaining o'loughlin at the back once again jack daniels at the bottom of the pack for the saints now he applies the tackle it's a good one too
Still in Sydney's attacking zone. Everett to Burke. Wide towards centre wing. Sydney have the numbers. Stafford tried to steal it. Thompson through but couldn't take it cleanly. Johnny Stevens hand pass towards Cook is going to be okay. Maybe they can set something up here for Maxfield. He looks down towards the forward line. Everett floats back dangerously. Barry is there also at the back of the pack. Can't keep it in play. And another throw in. In the left forward pocket is Stan Owls. Comes down to the ground. The season really has turned around after that well-documented first month or so. And they've had a very, very good run. Mooney. Everett and Peckett collides. They've got the numbers though. Finishes with Burke, was able to give it away. And they should be able to run it out as the clock incidentally runs down. Beveridge takes the mark and cops a shot from Nix. Luke Beveridge between half back and the centre wing will kick towards the wing area now. Ruse looking to hold front spot over Winmar, but Nicky Winmar gets there. Gives it away to Robert Harvey. They've got time to score if he's going to be finding his mark. He does on this occasion. It's Peter Everett. Everett needs a grab, preferably from Stuart Lowe. He's at the back, and he doesn't let them down. That's terrific, isn't it? It's just strong body work. He just basically walked into Dunkley and just shoved him out of the road. Good, strong stuff, and we know how strong his hands are. Have a look at this again. He just walks in, bumps in, gets all the weight momentum. Terrific downward balance, Stuart Lowe. Strong hands and strong body. And again, the ability to give the Saints the all-important goal after the siren. It's the last kick of the quarter, and a very important one for St Kilda, who's seen Sydney kick away, and Stuart Lowe has finished the term with a goal, and it's his second. Just what he wanted. Well, he gets a lot of criticism about his goal kicking because he is a bit erratic, but at least he earns the shots. And today, he's kicked them. He's had two shots, the first goal of the game, and then that one on the quarter time siren. He's stood up to the pressure, and he's kicked accurately. Good for Suri Lowe, good for St Kilda. And he's closed the gap. At quarter time, it's 14 points here at the SCG in favour of Sydney. 14 points the margin. After Sydney scooted away with the seven goals in the first term. St Kilda are 4-6. And it's an absorbing duel. If you may have just joined us, it's a full house. It's a bright, sunny day. Everett wins it. He was down looking towards Robert Harvey. Didn't find him. Cook working hard. Gets a short kick towards O'Loughlin. He's forced to tackle Jack Daniels, who gives it away to Everett. Everett kicks in towards the pocket. But there, defending once again, is Paul Roos. Done it so well for so long. Beveridge is going to try and spoil Kelly. Can't do so. The skipper looks to the outer side towards John Stevens. Gets a hand to it and then has to go. Jones was with him. Maxfield comes in for a late assist and takes it over the line. Stafford front position. Here's Robert Harvey, the Rolls Royce of footballers. Up towards centre half forward. Low. Punched by Dunkley. But a chance for Thompson and Heatley outside the 50. Jason Heatley over the ball. Well, he just dived on it and pulled it into himself. Crowd wanted ball. Now Fire said, give me the ball. And I'll give the Ruckman a chance. Still 14 points the margin. Everett goes it with the left hand again. Creswell, a little bit of time to flick it round the body. Head back towards Stephen Carey. He's got to beat a couple. Kelly's there to assist, but Burke and Lappin are there for St Kilda. Burke does well. The second attempt, he picks it up, hooks it straight onto the chest of Wharf, and Peter Everett says, you're going nowhere. <laughs> Here's Wall. High floating kick. And a great grab. Actually, even in the little place, the Swans of Roy have the marking advantage in most of the contest over the field. Well, Kelly's mark was good. His kick was good. And the mark by Barry was also good. He's just been exceptional down there. What we didn't see in the Swans four line right at the moment is, in fact, Mark Bay has been picked up by Jason, Justin Pickett just for that passage of play. Again, almost all over the field. The Swans just look more capable of marking the ball against their direct opponent. Barry aiming to push it out to a 20-point lead once again. That's what they had. And that's what they've got again. He's got his third. Back in the middle, 50 plays 30. Stafford wins in the middle, down to Creswell, on to Kelly. And Kelly really having an influence. Oh! Any amount of Swans players there, but nobody could take the mark. Barry having a big game, even though he dropped back. Creswell 
What about the recovery of Barry? Didn't yeah. take the mark, but to push it out. Well, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's one thing to loop, but you've got to try and land on your feet. And here we see again the centre bounce goes. The old firm, Creswell, over to Kelly. And it's a fantastic loop. But then when he hit the ground, hands and knees, the knockout, you don't have to take possession to make a constructive disposal. He might go down in the stat sheet for that little knock-on and from Barry has created the goal for Criswell. 9-2 plays 4-6. Ominous signs for St Kilda early on in the second term. They need a couple of steadying goals. Everett again goes with a roundhouse right. Sydney have been ripping it out of the middle. There was a high one there, went unnoticed. And finally, it is picked up. Don't forget to see. This is Arnon. Takes it from Creswell. Sydney go deep into attack again. A big pack of players. No mark taken in the front. O'Loughlin tries a little toe poke, but that's blocked. Troy Cook is lurking. Cook is still there. Has someone going past him? Kelly, but Daniel steals it. They'll get out of trouble. Lappin gives it to Winmar. Winmar's not out yet, but he's on his way. Maybe, or maybe not. Peckett is there for the assist, and they'll need him. Close to the boundary line. Lappin. It's got to beat Warm. Swings round now. Goes onto the right foot. Kicks it wide. Up towards the centre wing. Stewie Lowe comes charging out. Winmar's there. Big pack of players. Close to the boundary line. And up by Andrew Coates, the 31-year-old accountant, comes in to take charge. Brooksy. Yes, on the laser video just come on, Jason Heatley off for St Kilda. And Mark Orchard being treated for a hamstring injury. He's got the ice pack on it. Doesn't look too happy and very unlikely to come back on. Win Mars kick. Creswell gets back there. Back to Paul Ruse. The Swans looking irresistible at the moment. Ruse kick up towards half forward. O'Loughlin waits. And the mark is taken by Jason Mooney. Off to O'Loughlin, beautiful football base. I must say, they've orchestrated their forward line just magnificently today, the Swans. They just constantly rotate players to get mismatches. And as I just mentioned a little earlier, they got Bays down there somehow, or the picket Peckett ended up on him. In the marking leading contest, uh, Bays is going to come out on top on most occasions there. Bays looking for his first goal today. Way to the right, a bit of fancy, and he misses. You want to know this ground used to be a groundsman here at the SCG. With a margin 27 points and looking dangerous now for St Kilda. And interesting, Stafford has gone back into the full back line with Everett when he went forward. Obviously, Mooney or so has gone, or Stephen Carey, in fact, has gone into the ruck against Wittivick. You see how that uh, helps. Certainly, the centre bounce work of Stafford has, Stafford has helped the Swans dominate this game. Nathan Burke. Takes the kick in, gives it across to Beveridge. Wider towards Cripps. He's got a little bit of time. Runs his full distance as he has a look towards Everett. Need a mark. They need a steadying goal. Nix is going to deny them that for the moment as he sweeps it wide to Ruse. He'll chip out in front of Stephen Carey. The big man lopes along, but he's cruising. And he takes the one-hander. Stephen Carey. What an exciting player he is. In towards half forward. Wakeland shoots over the top with a big fist. Pushes it back again towards Carey. Zilla maybe a little quicker. Flicks it in towards Winmar. Interfered with. Couldn't take the mark. It doesn't matter. Harvey has it. He's 48 metres from home. He needs a goal. And St Kilda score their fifth. Harvey gets his second. Maybe that will fire up the Saints lead. Well, they got it forward, and Winmar just got a little bit uh, clear of Grant on that occasion. But again, twice we've seen Harvey go through the 50-metre mark and kick goals, when that is one aspect of his game that does not necessarily happen. So Lowe's kicked his couple, Harvey's kicked his couple to keep the uh, St Kilda in the game. Changing the Ruckman. Carey going up this time against Vitovic. Just about hit Carey on the back of the back. Comes to Cook. Kelly. Being hounded here by Ozzy Jones. Kelly trying to keep the ball in. Uh, just eludes him and goes out of bounds. Doesn't matter who's in there, Stafford or Carey, they just keep dominating the centre square clearances. Uh, the Swans, uh, after almost every centre bounce, the ball ends up in their forward 50. 
we thought Carey was going to be the man to uh, fill the big hole left by Plugger. But Carey has just taken his first mark and had his first kick. But the kick actually played against Darren Creswell then. The only thing I saw was a bit of an elbow in Luke Beveridge's ribs. So uh, that was what it was paid for. Low centre wing. Spoiler got very high. It comes to Jones. Hand pass to Harvey. Harvey's pass. One out is Everett. And a half a step in front of Stafford. He marks... And Big Spider will be going for goal from 50 metres. Interesting situation here. I often think that uh, Stafford, even though he's a pretty mobile ruckman, I don't think the tall ruckman play defence extremely well. It's interesting they've gone with the player who can match Everett's height rather than one of the more mobile players who can actually be uh, agile enough to give away a bit of height. Saints need this, but Everett's kick is away to the left. His first score for the day are behind. But it's 9-3 to 5 goals, 7. The Swans by 20 points midway through the second term. They've picked a couple in this term. St Kilda, just the one at the moment. And very keen to add to that to stay in touch. Oh, Carey caught one. Well, John, talk us through it. Well, Kerry's taken the mark, and obviously the 50-metre penalty is paid because he's knocked to the ground after the mark is taken. Um, didn't look particularly violent, but the fact that he's knocked into the ground after he's taken the mark means that uh, technically that's resulted in a waste of time, and a waste of time will result in a 50-metre penalty being paid. With Lazar Vitovic, man on the mark, Kevin Dyson on for Sydney, and Stephen Kerry shooting for goal. 46 metres out. That's OK. He's got number 10. Yes, it was just one of the kickoff drills. Uh, the Swans brought it out of their defence, and Kerry just dropped into the centre square on his own. And, of course, he was in between Lowe and Vitovic, and that is where a 50-metre penalty absolutely kills you. He certainly was, uh, it was earned, but uh, that's where misplaced aggression is very costly. Back in the centre with umpire Howlett and a big break now for Sydney. Vitovic rips it out of the middle. Low, clever with the back of his hand to steady the ball and then mark it on the rebound. A tough kick for goal for Stuart Lowe. Helicopter spin to it. The last line of defence, Paul Roos. We'll see that plenty of times. Third man in the marking contest, rooting the play. Geez, he does it beautifully. Here's Shannon Grant. Up towards centre Oops. wing. It gets through to the back of Kelly. He's got a paddock in front of him, Paul Kelly. Goes towards full forward. Creswell is there. Peckett trying to spoil. Clever defence, but it's still there for the Swans. Eventually Peckett. High tackle and a Swans free kick about 40 metres out from goal. Yeah, another situation here where... Let's have a look at this, yeah... Zilla goes, down, John. Yeah, Zilla goes over the top, but it's difficult to tell from that as to whether uh, Zilla was doing the infringing or not. But certainly uh, contact above the shoulder, and that was what it was paid for. So Arnott to stretch the Swans' lead. He's done it. Well, Battle of the Heavyweights is going clearly uh, Sydney's way at the moment. Well, it's interesting, it's 14 scoring shots to 12, but basically every time they're getting a shot, the Swans, they kick them. But basically, the last two are defensive errors. The error against Bitovic and the error then against Zilla. Uh, the Swans are scoring well enough from their own constructive play without actually giving them goal-scoring opportunities. Two quick replies after St Kilda challenge with a goal. Carey out of the middle. Oh, here he goes to Kelly again. It's a familiar pattern. A floating kick that was not so good from the skipper. Let's see what Leo Barry can do. He looks for the free kick. He doesn't get it. Cripps and Peckett are both there defending. Barry takes one out, not the other. And Justin Peckett takes it over the line. Well, you know where to put the cameras after the centre bounce is straight the Swans forward line. They've just absolutely dominated these uh, centre squares. Um, more so than I can recall seeing in many matches. It's just a one-way traffic out of there. Ruse, Wakeland contesting, O'Loughlin, Cook there also, 
Here's Maxwell on the end of it. Now the left foot is in the perfect spot. Here he goes, in towards Hall Ford. Oh, Barry almost pulled in a spectacular one-hander. Couldn't do so. Burke applies a good tackle. It spills free to O'Loughlin. Burke, another fine smother. Back to O'Loughlin again. It's tight and it's tough and it's close. Kerry leads it. Mooney leads it. <laughs> almost a high tackle. And the umpire eventually says, no, no, I'll have it. Gee, they threw it around like Grease Lightning and threatened to score the desperate work by the St Kilda defence. 11-3 plays 5-7. Saints not out of uh, the trouble zone yet, though. Shanahan couldn't take it. And around the body, it's high. Dyson was there. He's still there, Kevin Dyson. Gives it out to Stephen Terry. Thank you very much, he says. That goes. Yes, they had plenty of players forward there, the Swans. I mean, they're just doing everything well. Carey is now in the ruck. You know, I suppose the one thing it does is Stafford's having a little bit of a spell out of the ruck back on Everett at the moment. And Carey's kicked a couple of goals, albeit unusual big man goals. Obviously, the 50-metre penalty in the left foot snap. But it's one-way traffic. They don't look like missing the Swans. Looking very, very powerful. Well, the Swans have come through a spell of wet weather and have kicked 22 and 25 goals in the last couple of weeks. They look as though they might better it today, but Winmar comes out of the middle and kicks a top-running goal. Well, don't we talk so often about the Sydney cricket ground and how close it is to centre square? This is one stage where... I me mean, just took the ball out of the centre square. Winmar cruised through half-forward and kicks the goal. It's... Uh, We've seen the Swans do it so often, so finally St Kilda have got one, uh, one fourth, but it's just centre bounce through the goals, back at another centre bounce. Let's have another try. Well, 18 goals between them, and we have eight minutes to go to half time. A couple in a row now would be handy for the Saints. Harvey out of the middle. It bounces up towards the 50, low. Back to Burke. Oh, well done. Didn't quite reach Daniels, but he slipped the tackle. Now he puts it up in the air. Lappin. Got it. Well, centre bounce is important. We get half on them as much as we like, but St Kilda have got it forward the last time, and they've earned uh, another shot at goal from point black range. You think Lappin should kick this, but it's just for a really centre bounce goal. That's what this game's all about. Matthew Lappin right in front. And that is two in a row now for the Saints. Twenty-six points the margin. Well, it's so important just to keep in touch. And again, a couple of quick kicks out of the forward line. And this time, Stuart Lowe come and met the ball. Again, Paul Ruse, you see him in screen there. He just cruises back into the slot. But this time, he just couldn't quite get there to be third man up. And it uh, was... So the boy from Chilton, Matthew Lappin, gets St Kilda's seventh. They cling to Sydney. Lazavidovic smothered by a lock. Troy Cook working hard. So to Jones, but it's flicked out quickly. Sydney start the run again. In towards full forward, in towards Barry and Creswell. But this time Creswell beaten for it. Good mark taken by Justin Packer. Short to Shanahan. Shanahan goes across the ground, finishes again with Peckett, who this time's found a bit of space, almost gets down to the middle. So it could prove costly for Sydney, although Everett won't catch Wharf, and he'll defend towards Arnott on the outer side. With him is Zilla. Good recovery by Stephen Zilla. He's a real goer. Arnott's got him now. Cry of ball goes up, but it stays in play. Maybe another one for St Kilda. Three in as many minutes could bring them right back, but that's away to the left. And one behind. Six minutes remaining in this first half, and Matthew Lappin now has one goal. One, what do you think? Louis down there on the yeah, mountain. 
Yeah, Sandy, I think it's a very crucial time at the moment. The Saints starting to play their way back into the game. And as Lee was saying, just clearances out of the centre. The uh, Both ends of the square are very open, and the team that gets it out first is having the goal-scoring opportunities. Dale, can you tend to take the foot off the accelerator when you get three or four quickly and suddenly you're 38 points clear? Yeah, I, I, obviously uh, the boys are not doing it on purpose, but yeah, probably getting into the comfort zone a touch, and they really need to knuckle down for this last six or seven minutes. Let's see what Maxville can do, shooting for goal from the left forward pocket. He swings it across the face. The left footer would have preferred to have been in the other pocket for that one. From that kick in, I think this is where the error took place. Uh, Maxfield marked the ball. Bit of it got there late and didn't punch. I think he tried to mark the ball. I mean, he just should have been able to spoil uh, the Maxfield mark back there on the St Kilda half forward line. See how tight this ground is, and the uh, semicircles just about reach the centre square here at the SCG. So Jason Cripps still in the back pocket for St Kilda. He'll kick the last couple of goals. Peckett. Oops. Daniels. Nix goes to ground. Creswell on the right. O'Loughlin in the pocket. He's not looking to goal, he's looking to give it off. <laughs> Can't miss the target on the way out. Peckett missed the target, and all of a sudden it was set up for the turnover. Michael O'Loughlin still looking for teammates to find their way in the clear out in front of goal. Eventually, he might have to kick for it. Holding for the drop punt. And the banana bends back, but not enough. And just through for a minus four. Michael O'Loughlin, one goal, one today. 12-5 to seven goals, eight. We're just under five minutes to half time. Nathan Burke, tucked in the back pocket, is off. And a good smother by Leo Barry. Keeps it down in that forward zone. He's having a game, Barry, isn't he? Three goals, two of those in the first term. And this is only his 12th game. Blood rule, Sandy. It looks as though Nathan Burke might be bleeding from his arm. So uh, Mark Ash asking him to leave the ground. And Burke, understandably, not happy about it. <laughs> now, you wouldn't say he's whipping off at 100 kilometres an hour, would you? Don't wipe it off your on your jumper, Berkey, because if it's on your jumper, they'll tell you to change the jumper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that brings Daniel Healy onto the ground. We often see the small players following each other around just near the centre circle at the moment. We've got Ruse and Carey and Wakeland and Vitovic all trying to get maxed up as the way their teams want it. Mooney tries to push it to Kelly, whose soccer's off the ground. He's going to have to go again, this time in the other pocket. Needs help, goes to ground, finds Troy Cook. Cook gives it away to Barry. Had it for a moment and lost it and goes again. It's tight and a good smother. This time by St Kilda. Force it over the line in the right forward pocket for Sydney. Well, Leo Barry's game can't be just uh, counted on his stats and his three goals, but he's smothering and shoveling the ball out. Blue's got very high, but couldn't take clean possession. Real mess up there. Eventually, Robert Harvey. In the absence of Burke, he might have to have a big couple of minutes here, Harvey. Heatley's back on the ground. He's got it at centre wing. Disappointing. Brown. Wolf gets back there to put the pressure on Lappin. And the umpire will ball it up. We saw Paul Ruse uh, contest that ball in the ball. I think he's a designated backman still. But he's on... Uh, I think it's Darrell Wakeland, but it's just he's just running all over the place. Uh, when uh, Stafford went back, Ruse just went up the field and becomes a second ruckman with Carey. Well, here's Robert Harvey again. Sets it up for full forward, but a disappointing kick. Oh. Stafford, he left Everett, but then dropped the mark. Could be flipped out to Everett now, unmarked in the goal square. But the defence makes sure that's going nowhere. Nathan Burke preparing to come back on. He's one of the playmakers for St Kilda. He's had 13 possessions. Harvey's had 18 for the Swans. Kelly's had 13 and Creswell 14. And Dunkley goes over the top, back out of bounds. No real surprise with those stats. They just dominate, don't they? Four of them. It's Andrew Dunkley and Nathan Burke. Don't know whether he's changed his jumper or not. Dunkley again. Tony Brown there, Rowan Moore falls up, up in the air it goes. Sakilda desperate for a goal here. The snap partly smothered, could have almost been a free kick to Duncan, who was held without it, didn't go very far. Jack Daniels, now sometimes it's an interesting kick, 
Well, he comes across the ground and he finds ways of it. It was a good one. Yes, good execution. Thought his way through the pressure situation and found a bit of it there to just keep St Kilda in touch. They're just hanging in there, St Kilda. That scoreboard is against them, obviously, by 27 points, but they're just hanging in there. They can get another goal or two before this halftime break. 14 points, Lee, at quarter time. As you say, they get this one now, bringing them back to 21. Still well and truly in the ball game. Uh, that could bring rain. It's high. It's just about got the distance, I think, that kick. Deceivingly high, but it's straight in its line-up. Well, he got under that, and we thought, how far? Well, in total distance travelled, that is long a kick as I've seen, I reckon. <laughs> because the ball has travelled 50 metres along the ground. Have a look at this. Have a look at this. This is Daniels. He just thought his way through. He gets criticised because he can be a bit sloppy in the space. But that was excellent. That was a good finish. And here, this is a 50 metre kick up. That's 50 up and 50 along. Is that a 100 metre kick? <laughs> Great goal to Lazar Vidovic. As Lee Matthews said, 50 metres up and 50 metres in distance. That's longer than that. Jeff Bering one, Lee. Here's uh, Maxfield going back towards the middle with Darren Creswell. Creswell finds Ruse on the outer side. He looks towards right half forward. Sydney have the playmaker there. He picks it up now and wobbles it forward with a hand pass to himself. Kelly's kick is over the line. Well done. Down to the boundary line. Another good smotherer. Brooksy. Yes, thanks very much, Sandy. Just had word from the Whitman's airship captain. He thought he saw a UFO, but it was only Lazer's kick, so I just want to get through to him. Everything's OK. <laughs> oh, dear. From the throw, and there is Vitovic again. Wakeland working hard. A surge it down towards uh, left half forward. Nix is there defending for Sydney. Winmar coming in from the side takes the mark. A crucial minute and a half now. If St Kilda could get another one or even two, well, set it up for a classic half. Sydney, on the other hand, would dearly love to. I was going to say this it. is Paul Ruse's opponent. Ruse is back in the half back. Well, he's going to play his, own, play his own race, Paul Ruse. Here's Daniel Healy's kick towards Everett, and he takes it, the big man. Used his body well. And with just over a minute remaining, this is a good fight back by St Kilda. It has, and uh, Nicky Winmark's gone into the centre square. That's helped a little as well. But here, this is just Edwards' height. It's funny, if the positions were reversed and uh, Stafford had been the forward, I think he would have gone for the ball, but he rubbed about Edwards' body and got out position. 45-degree angle. He's been watching Lazar kick, but I don't think it matters too much because he's got the accuracy. And St Kilda really hitting back. Spider Everett gets his first. And his 35th for the day, the big man from Hastings, but more importantly, it closes the gap and it makes it now 15 points. Now, as I say, Wakeman, he'd gone up the field. Uh, Ruse had dropped back to half back, but that time Ruse got caught in between. Doesn't happen too often. And it was just really simply better body positioning by Everett. Well, the Swans got out to a lead of seven goals, but St Kilda have kicked the last four. Big finish to the first half by St Kilda. Comes back to Harvey. And he's wrapped up in the middle. The umpire will ball it up. Half a minute to go in this second quarter. Stafford. Down to Creswell. And he uses Seymour. Up inside the 50. There's O'Loch on there. Knocked away by Barry. Cook the hand pass wide for Maxfield. 70 metres from goal. Maxfield flips it out. Chance for Cook. Time running out. 10 seconds left. Cook's hand pass blocked by Harvey. Healy is there for St Kilda. Goes to ground. Will get a free kick. And that should be all she wrote in the first half. Lowe gets underneath the ball. Punched by Dunkley. And the hand pass off, but not in time for Mooney to set up something for Dunkley. But what a half of football. That produced 21 goals in a seesawing game. And Sydney looked as though they had it almost wrapped up about 10 minutes ago. And then the Saints came back with the last four goals of the first half. Checking the half-time score here at the SCG. Sydney leading by 15 points. 12-5-77. St Kilda, 9-8-62. So here we go, second half at the SCG. 
Hope you're enjoying the coverage on Footy's home ground. Channel 7, Harvey tries to get it out of the middle. Goes again. Looks towards Stephen Zilla for support and gets it. Carey affects a tackle. Pushes him away from the ball. This may open the door for Stewie Maxfield. Around the corner he comes and he does it nicely. Well, maybe Stephen Carey's fired up. Looks in towards full forward. The lead is on. The kick was a beauty. And leaping Leo Barry is going to have another shot for goal. He's been an important player, hasn't he? I think I sort of mentioned that nauseam. They're having trouble getting the right type of play on him. Cripps has certainly got a bit better height, but at the moment, Barry is getting off whatever respective opponent he's on and looking very strong overhead. Certainly low stats, but a very important uh, part he's playing in this game. Four kicks, three goals, just to make it five and four. No problems. Great start for Sydney. Well, the crowd getting behind the Swans after they get the first goal of the second half. Sydney have won their last 20 home games at the SCG. But St Kilda have beaten them in their last five appearances here. And mostly that was because of Tony Lockett when he was playing for the Saints. Remarkably, in his last four seasons for St Kilda against Sydney, in seven games, Plugger kicked 12 and 11, 15, 8 and 8, 11 and 9. No wonder he was a prime target for Sydney. They saw plenty of him when he was in the opposition. Thompson lost control of it in a big pack. Hand pass ripped out by Stafford to Maxfield. Kelly running onto it at half forward. Looking dangerous. Oops. 25 metre hand pass. Sits up for Stevens. He beats the tackle. John Stevens round the boundary line. Oh, wonderful effort. Didn't miss by a lot. And crunched over after he got rid of the kick. He's not too good at the moment. Excuse me, one of the players that St Kilda need to lift is Ozzy Jones. Just hasn't had much of the ball at this point. Mark Orchard did a good job in the first half, but I notice Nix is now on Jones, so I just wonder whether Orchard is hurt. Just the desperation here to get to the tackle to make sure of the point. It's going to be a difficult kick either way. It's back at centre wing. Maxfield has started this second half in brilliant fashion. This kick inside the 50. Harvey there. Barry put on the spoil. Leo Barry playing a game. Kelly. Did he keep it in? Yes, he did. Here's Maxfield again. Raking kick to the top of the square. Bounces past Bays. Jones is back there. Overruns it. Still a chance for the Swans. Oh, Lachlan. Out he comes. Nix. And he's kicked it. Tony Brown awaits another opportunity. Vidovic wins it. Barry almost spooned it back with one hand. Healy soccer's off the ground down towards low. Burke now has Lappin running. He's also got Spider Everett. Good work by Cruz. Had to defend him and pushed it wide. Ricochets off Lappin. Oh, beautiful play by Paul Ruse. Kept the ball in play because he knew he had a teammate there. And suddenly they're out of trouble. Wharf goes over the middle. It's a high floating kick. Jumper was pulled as he took the kick and just shortened it a fraction. St Kilda defend. Vitamin on centre wing. Jack Daniels running past. Floats a left foot pass to Harvey. Uh, <laughs> he's like a pound of margarine, isn't he? He can just escape. He's a, hard man, tackle. he's a hard man to tackle. Just that swerve of the hips, actually. Yeah. It's just that low centre of gravity. Have a look at out there. We just missed the tackle. But Grant wasn't able to nab uh, Harvey. But that's no shame because Harvey has dropped off many an opposition tackler with that just square the hips the spider for his second uh, the left footer looks okay and St Kilda need more of those rapidly two to Peter Everett 36 for the season and 10 now to St Kilda 10-8 plays 14-6 yes again we're so, we've, uh, we've seen this so often haven't we Robert Harvard Harvey takes on the tackler looks like he's caught cold but he just they just can't quite hold him and of course Everett was able to mark and uh, and kick the goal. The Swans kicked the first two goals of the quarter and the Saints have hit back with one of their own. Cook for Sydney. Floats the hand pass. Seymour runs onto it. Kelly inside 50. Shanahan now has Barry. He's been a problem, Leo Barry. Winmar gets back. 
Pumping it all the way and concedes a point. We saw Stevens barreled after he had a shot for goal. How is he? Thanks, Drew. Yeah, he's copying treatment at the moment. They, they've got kind of the curtains up, but it looks like maybe something around the hip area or upper thigh, but they're working on him frantically. Obviously, hoping to get him back on the ground shortly. The curtains up, hope they don't shoot him. Ball up just outside the 50. Now a chance here for the Swans. Half forward. Stafford against Vidovic. Thumped onto Dyson. Hand pass. A lot them. Well done. Bays! Took ball and in front of Peckett. No hope for the defender. Well, it took two quarters, but eventually, <laughs> eventually uh, the situation presented itself where it was a genuine marking contest here between Bays and Peckett. And most occasions, if he can get the front spot, Bay should be able to outmark. He must be giving in the old language five or six inches. Or well, Justin Peckett is giving him five or six inches in height. So Mark Bays, who kicked six goals last week, this for his first today, and he has missed from a set shot no more than 25 to 30 metres out. Three behinds for Mark Bays. Back to a 24-point margin. Justin Peckett looks for Lazar bit of it. Finds him now. He's put a bit of pressure on uh, Sirikowski. And loses it all too easily. Kelly to I lock them. Well, that is very, very dangerous. Could be 50 as well, I think. Yes, it will. It is, and he'll have a shot right on the line, directly in front. A gimme goal. Similar to what we saw earlier, Sandy, where I lock them had taken the mark, and Jamie Shanahan just a little bit late on the scene and took him around the head. Sort of a crude attempt to spoil, but very late. So as a result, the 50 metre penalty again is paid for something that results in a waste of time. Michael O'Loughlin gets his second. Sydney answer again. Three goals to one this quarter for the Swans. Stafford wins in the middle, but Harvey sharks the ball to Burke. Straight down the corridor. Everett. Two touches, not enough. Darrell Wakeman on the forward line. And the ball under a heap of players and will be balled up. Swans giving great excitement to their fans here at the SCG. Even in the absence of Tony Lockett, they're kicking a top score here. 15-8 to 10 goals, 8. Knocked out by Stafford. Grant's had a poor day, Shannon Grant. He's had just one kick. Out to Dyson. Up the centre wing. Almost there to Mooney. And right at the interchange gate, the ball out of bounds. If you've just joined us, midway through the third quarter here at the SCG and the home side in control. Burke, however, looks to get it to low. Wide at a Winmar, away from Mooney. Nicky Winmar, penetrating kick. Inside 50, Spider Everett was the big flyer. Big pack of players. Now they've got the numbers here, St Kilda. Lappin runs into a brick wall, however. Loses the football. Maxfield flicks it out delightfully to Ruse, and here they go. Stafford, the big man in the middle, shrugs the Peckett tackle. Puts it over the top for Shannon Grant. If it sits, he's in business. Peckett persists with a good chase, but he finds Maxfield 40 metres out directly in front. Well, there's so much been uh, written and spoken about the Swans pushing back in defence, and they certainly do that, but I tell you what they do do is just, well, they run forward out of defence. And when there's an exchange of play out of their defensive 50, they just flow forward when they're in control of the ball, and Maxfield really was the one who's ended up on it because he's become the spare player forward. Uh, Peckett, who's now his direct opponent, just couldn't follow back quick enough. Maxfield's going to be kicking from 45. Floating left footer goes across the face of goal. 
Sandy, the emergency umpires just spent a fair bit of time at the centre half back position speaking to a few players, including Wakeland, so there may well have been a report for, for wrestling. Robert Harvey. John Stevens there on his bike. But he's not leaving town yet. In towards the middle. Burke gives it another belt, going wider towards Lafford. Wharf is there with him. Maxfield, who just missed that one, tries to push it forward. Good work by Austin Jones. A high kick, though. Mark should have been taken. It wasn't. Again, Sydney have the numbers. Shannon Graham finds his mark in Darren Creswell. He's had another big year. Looks towards the inform Leo Barry. Kelly was there also. Oops, a miss by Jones. Could be costly. Barry had it, then lost it. Shoveled out. Peckett, a chance. Towards right half forward. St Kilda desperately won a couple of quick goals. Jason Heatley did well. Everett is the target down at full forward or someone going past. Wakeman is there. Tony Brown's kick finishes over the line in the right forward pocket. No addition to the score. So Laser Vitovic having a spell on the bench after opening proceedings in this third quarter. Daniel Healy there with him. Saints need to get this from the boundary throw in. Forward pockets and Kilder in attack. Low against Stafford. Robert Harvey. Pretty close, but just away to the right. Harvey's kicked two goals, one. But he just keeps getting the football. He's had 23 possessions. And we're only halfway through the third quarter. He's had a month where he's had a couple of 40s. And a 36. Oops, oops. Comes to the front to Burke. Hand pass is good. And Wakeman will get the goal. And that was a goal to Darrell Wakelin. Shane Wakelin, an identical twin, usually plays forward. Darrell back. And they've swapped. At least I think they have. I'm not sure, Sandy. <laughs> Peck it again. Well, this is what happened in the second quarter. St Kilda charged back. Kohanger on Robert Harvey and he'll take the free kick. And of course, as we noticed then, Sandy Stewart Lowe has now gone into the uh, ruck position uh, just to try and change things around a little bit uh, for St Kilda, see if he can get his marking power around the ground a bit. Uh, they've still continued with Everett as the true full forward. Harvey going for his third from 41 metres. And again, that's pushed way right. Saints hit back to within 14 points in the second after Sydney cruised away to a 38 point lead. Trent to do the same thing in the third term. Here's Dyson taking it from Ruse. Kevin Dyson. O'Loughlin will be at the back. He did give a nudge and he didn't see the umpire to the side there. <laughs> it wasn't too subtle. <laughs> fans at the other end of the ground doing but they couldn't see what went on Dyson's got to beat a couple and clever work by Dyson yeah, he Good tends point. to let it float down doesn't he Mooney at the back here he is again will he take a kick no he'll give it across to Winmar who hasn't had one of his best days Daniels gives it back to him after being given the free Good news that uh, John Stevens is back on the ground that should be a ball to Nix Mark paid to Nix David Howard signalling that he's paying the mark. Don't know what happened after the ball here, but... No. Uh, he was certainly held the mark. I would have thought that was a play on himself, but anyway. Well, Stuart Lowe good, awesome. <laughs> does to win mark. Could have been an accidental boot in the face to Jones. Great thing about this game, isn't it? Plenty of debate. <laughs> Lappin goes to the outer side. Cripps looks in towards the middle. Maybe Sirikowski could set something up here for the Sainers. He has a look downfield. They need a couple desperately. Spider Everett floats over the top. Nick's waits down. He's beaten. Heatley from 35 metres pulls it to the left. Well, they've had their chances. Yeah, they've got to get those kind of goals. I mean, they've got a deficit to make up. You can't afford to miss those half chances. And that was more than the half chance. That was a very definite chance. Yeah, in the boot. The boot. Hurt. Might be accidental, but I was going to say it might be accidental, John, but it hurts just as much, doesn't still, it? Still does the same injury, doesn't it? Yeah, cut over the eye. But I agree with you, Lee. I really think that that was a play on call. It shouldn't have been paid as a mark. 
So Daniel Healy comes on for the Saints to replace Jones, who goes for some treatment. And we're waiting for Brad Seymour to bring the ball into play. To his own advantage, draws a man, finds Preswell. Preswell boots towards centre wing. Sirikoski couldn't mark. Kelly whips it away. And Kelly to the advantage of Arnott. Open forward line. Bays. Shane Wakeman gets back. Bays goes to ground but recovers. Does very well to Kerry. Back to Mark Bays. Has missed again. That's four behinds. Well, he's getting there. He'll soon have a goal. Another couple. <laughs> Boy, he's just been fantastic again, Paul Kelly. He's had 20 odd possessions, but it's just he didn't get a stat in that uh, flurry on the wing. But just the hardness of the ball uh, creates the path for the Swans' teammate to take possession. Cripps goes short. Shanahan marks, still in the defensive 50. Oh. Healy just on. Good spoil by Cook. I suppose, and you talk about a very good team, one of the deficiencies that St Kilda have is the real precision kicking of most of their defenders. They're not, you know, really fantastic kicks of the ball to set up teammates on the way out. Stevens. Soccer's off the ground. No. Applies the tackle. It's a good one too on Sirikoski. Locks it up there. Arnott working hard. Kelly again tries to soccer it out. It's taken by Winmar off to Burke. Almost smothered. Harvey. Can't strike the tackle this time. Thompson. High kick. But only as far as Andrew Duncan. Again, Stevens forced to stand his ground and he caught one in the back from Stuart Lowe. He's slow to pick himself up. Winmar from Burke. Wider to Wakeland, who marks inside 50. And that's what you have to do because Ruse was caught 10 metres from Wakeland because he plays that way. So when you come forward, you're able to use Paul Ruse as direct opponent, which on this occasion was Wakeland. Win uh, Wakeland, Winmar was good enough to pick him out and deliver the ball accurately. Well, this could get them back to within 17 points. The margin was 14 points at quarter time, 15 at half time. So they are certainly staying with them. But can they get any closer? He's got to kick this first. Wakeland, a long bomb. Pretty good kick too. He's got his second. Both in this turn for Darrell Wakeland, the boy from Port Adelaide originally. Well, yes it was. It was six out of the midfield. He thought his way through and so did Burke. And have a look at this Winmar, he assessed his options, he saw as we see, Ruse is just always playing off his direct forward. But you've got to find it, you've got to kick accurately, and Winmar kicked accurately, Wakeland did too. Margin back to 17 points after the Swans skipped away, back come the Saints again. Low in ruck, beat Stafford, but it comes to Creswell. And another big game, Darren Preswell. Inside 50. Bays over the top of Wakeland. Shane Wakeland. Good hand pass. Shanahan. Low is there again. Half back for the Saints. Half back to half forward at this short ground. All Sydney in the air. No mark. Crom is needed. And a ball up on 50. And one must say, Stuart Lowe, I think, has just given St Kilda a little bit in the ruck situation. Uh, certainly, he's not embarrassed at the centre bounces. Ozzy Jones back on. Number five in the left foreground there with a bandage around his head. Brooksy. Down goes Winmar. Lappin picks up. Advantage? No, it's got to come back to Neil Elvis Winmar. Oh. Signal paid for a trip. Boy, Stevens takes it. Thumps it to the 50. Tops it from behind. Spoils Kelly. Takes him to ground. Chance for Arnott. Thompson again. Daniels. Oh. You worry, don't you, Sandy? <laughs> Lappin. Bit like a piece of string. Peck it up the ground. He's wrapped up. Ball going nowhere. And the umpire will ball it up. Just over four minutes remaining to three-quarter time. Margin 17 points. St Kilda hanging in. 
from the bounce. Maybe they can close it even further. Harvey spears it in towards full forward. Floats over the top. Pressure on the Sydney defence once again. Rouge, no doubt, will tidy up as he comes to the outer side. Burke is there. Dyson is there. It's a battle between the two. Burke gets it out. Jones says it's socket away towards the centre wing, towards Kelly. Overruns it. Unlike him, Burke taken high. And he's going to get a free kick. Now, the Swans crowd are going bananas about that. But really, if Berkey's head is down and somebody tackles him high, as it is here, his head is down, tackled high, the player has to be protected in that situation, so the free kick correctly paid. In the wards low again, but there's a huge pack of players. Creswell has it held to him. There'll be a bounce. Well, it's all set up for a, a ripping last quarter. The big question will be, can St Kilda catch them? That young fan certainly hopes so. Souvenir sellers have done more with him. <laughs> Stat. Well, I don't know about you, John. I reckon those ruck free kicks are rubbish. Oh, let I agree. Go. Yeah. I mean, the high tackle was the signal given by Mark Nash, but they really have to be fair dinkum, not soft. Stafford towards Creswell. Incidentally, the threes are 14 to 8 in favour of St Kilda. Here's the lead. Now he'll drop back. Barry O'Loughlin. Michael, yes! That one could hurt St Kilda. Yes, they, they just had to try and keep them from kicking the goal. St Kilda are doing much better now that they've got their genuine full back line players back there. Wakeland and uh, Shanahan. Shanahan obviously prevented Barry from marking. He's done it the whole of the quarter, but the ground level coming of O'Loughlin, again, he got to the front position. Daniel has done a reasonable job, but he is a magical player, Michael O'Loughlin, Dale Lewis. Louis, what do you, what do you reckon about Michael O'Loughlin? Yeah, if he gets too many more goals, Marty will overtake me on the goal kicking, but... <laughs> um, yeah, he's starting to come into it, Mick, and that's a crucial goal for us at this time of the quarter. Back in the middle, low with a backhander. Socket out of the air by Burke. Wakeman tries to float the hand pass. Jones has the ball punched away to the safety of the boundary line. Nick's doing the spoiling, and a throw in down at St Kilda's left half forward. With two and a quarter minutes to go to three-quarter time. 106 plays, 83. Stafford. Homegrown talent from Sydney. Really making a name for himself in the AFL. Stevens kick. Hurriedly towards centre wing. It'll beat players out of bounds. And a throw in. It's interesting that point. Uh, the Shanahan, who is uh, St Kilda's fullback, I think you've got to play fullback on all comers. It's a really specialist uh, position back there. And even on a medium sized forward, you've just got to keep rotating to keep your defenders in their best part of the defence. Dyson a hand pass, breaks away from Harvey, and another throw in. Gives the crowd a chance to go Ooh, when the boundary umpire throws the ball in. Stan Alves down at ground level. Robert Harvey is now up to 27 possessions. Reasonable day. For him, yes. Creswell leaves it for Nicks, who dropped it. Good work by Ozzy Jones, and good work by Stafford to tap it out, but straight to Harvey, back to Jones. The advantage paid here to St Kilda. Kreps runs through the middle. They want a couple before three-quarter time. Everett needs a mark. Great defence that's belted away towards the half-back line and taken over. Done reasonably subtly, but the intention was certainly there by the man in screen who's kicked the goal in this quarter, Matthew Nix. And uh, Stan Alves still having plenty to say to Ozzy Jones. With under a minute and a half remaining. Seymour. It's interesting that situation when Cripps was coming forward, Everett led at the kicker. Sometimes when a very tall player such as Everett gets on the lead, he then becomes a relatively slow player. If he tries to kind of give himself a long, be a long option, then he becomes obviously taller than a direct opponent. Chance maybe for Burke. Now he's got to apply the tackle on Warp. Now Kelly can't take it back to low. Swings it back inside 50. A ruse pushed into it. Couldn't take the mark. But this defence, Seymour is in trouble now. 
free kick paper for incorrect disposal. Yeah. Coatsy has deemed that he uh, had a prior opportunity to dispose of the ball, and we've flogged that term to death. But the interesting thing here is that I don't think from where Andrew Coates was, he would have been able to see whether the ball was, in fact, handball. He did, he did look like he got a hand he pass did, he did look clear as now he if, was tackled. And if he handballs the ball, then play on should be the call. And from where Coates he was, I don't think he would have been able to see whether he did or whether he didn't handball the footy. Well, the bottom line is St Kilda can make their quarter with this kick. Ten metres out, Hatley. And he's kept them alive. Jason Heatley gets his 48th goal for the season. Well, yes, they do keep coming, as we've uh, mentioned. And here, Seymour just didn't really see that Heatley was behind him. He probably did get the hand pass clear, but he did have a lot of time, and it was a very good tackle, so I think most of the time that probably will be a free kick. They keep coming, St Kilda, as we've said. Just a matter, can they stop the Swan scoreboard ticking as they do their overtake? Martin back to 17 points. 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Stafford wins in the middle. This could be vital to centre break. Lowe's hand pass. A bit slick for Lappin. Yeah. He is skillful. Up to half forward. Harvey. Now bowled over after he took the mark. No penalty for that. Robert Harvey too far out to score. And he looks as though he's hurt his hip. Very nearly as he as he took the mark. But certainly no intention to go for the footy. Now this is handy. He is certainly up. buried after he took the mark. Nothing played. Oh, no. Yes, he's going to have a shot for goal after the siren. And Jason Heatley, who waited a long time for his first goal, got it about 40 seconds ago. And here he goes for his second. Harvey not looking too good. Just put him inside kicking distance. I suppose a genuine spoil, was it, uh, John? Or would you have thought really it was uh, <laughs> a half and half late spoil? 50 <laughs> metre, metre penalty, maybe. I think a 50 I think a 50 metre penalty certainly would have crossed Dave Howlett's mind, but uh, having heard the siren. Judgment probably got the better of it. Well, it couldn't be in better hands. He's their leading goal kicker for the season. This for number 49, Jason Heatley. He's got it up for this. Oh, it just got away and missed to the left. Started well. That would have been a bit handy. We must have really deviated at the last moment because the goal umpire was directly in the middle of the goal. At the last moment, obviously, the ball just... Uh, Altered in its flight, so well, a 50 metre penalty would have been a certain goal, but that's kind of those half and half things that uh, are part of a footy game. Well, yeah, but just on those 50 metre penalties, though, though, Lee, it only has to be a moment late. If it's yeah. a moment after the mark, then the 50 metre penalty should be paid, and uh, Troy Cook's attempt to spoil was certainly late. Well, that was another quarter that Sydney got out to a big lead and were reeled in by the Saints, but they won it by a point. At quarter time, they led by 14, half time 15, now 16. Will they win by 17? It's 16, 10 to 13, 12. We had Stan Elspeth spent a lot of time with Aussie Jones and Robert Harvey pleading with them. Nathan Burke copying a little bit of treatment, a little bit sore, but it is fired up. The atmosphere is building. Exceptional last quarter we're looking forward to. Winmar lost it. Ripped off the ball. He didn't have it. He'll take a free kick. The advantage will be played, so Thompson's away. First goal to St Kilda. They'll bring the house down. Maybe not here, but in St Kilda fans' areas. Look at this one. A snap in towards goal. It goes right across the face. We'll see a throw in in the right forward pocket. Jason Heatley, with one in the third term, could so easily have had another one on the side. Stafford, Lapper, a snap. And that's probably being a bit kind because it was wide and it wasn't very pretty. Seymour will bring it back into play. Boys are certainly earning their money today. They've been long quarters. All three so far, exceeding 31 minutes. Here's Brad Seymour. Towards Stafford and Dunkley. Oh, well, if he did cop a few words at three-quarter time, they might have had the desired effect. He's got that... Jack Daniels like kick towards centre wing. Good work by Kelly, and away goes the captain. In towards half forward, out comes leaping Leo Barry. Sirikoski's there as well. Burke's waiting in the wings. Dyson's hot on his hammer. Burke working hard. Sirikoski in for the assist, and he takes it over the line on the outer side. 
do think St Kilda have got their defensive matchups much better in this second half. Now, Waitman's on Bays, Shanahan on Barry's. The only uh, ill matchup is probably Sarah Kosky. Um, he's on the smaller. Well, here's Paul Kelly bursting out of the pack, but he's shot for goal, disappointing, and away to the right. I just finished that. Sarah Kosky was actually is actually matched up on Grant, and that's a bit of a mismatch, I suppose, in height. But I think it's important to get the most uh, composed full back line players on the full back line, and St Kilda have done that in the second half. 107 plays 90. Peckett kicks in. Shanahan. Peckett oh. receives it back. The hand pass too high for him. Trouble now for St Kilda. Shanahan again. Up to Lappin. Lappin's kick out in front of Heatley on the bounce. Just inside the line. Stewie Lowe plucked it in. Oh, those strong hands. I think Matthews was lucky he wasn't cleaned up then. He's not built like Lee Matthews. Young Ben Matthews. Here's Wakelin. Lost control of it. It was a throw. It went to Ruse anyway, but it'll come back to the Swans for a free kick. And it will be taken by Paul Ruse. I reckon Stuart Lowe would have ripped his head off if he'd got his hands on his head <laughs> rather than the ball. Just he's got a strong grip. I think they've got to pump the footy up again. He would have taken a couple of pounds out of it. Mm. Going short to Dyson. The hand pass back. Who's here and Bobber? Eventually, Seymour floats one over to Dyson. They've worked it all right. Half back to half forward. Kelly trying to run onto this. He leaves Thompson in his wake. Ooh. Still with Kelly. Has time to line them up. And once again, he misses to the right. Yeah, they're a tough angle from out there. Every now and again, you might kick one from out near the boundary line. Uh, tight, but uh, not going to kick a lot. But a fantastic burst of speed to actually get clear in the first place. Three straight kicks in it. Good chase by Michael O'Loughlin. Here's Ozzy. Ozzy Jones. To half board. Now Lowe's going to get a chance. Kick drops short. Stewie looks in towards full forward, but Ruse is standing there like a rock. They float over the top. No mark paid, and there'll be a bounce in St Kilda's forward zone. Almost marked by Heatley, but poor play by uh, Stuart Lowe. He basically just put it on his boot. He had, he had three players clear, didn't use them, but you know, it was obviously off the off hands the, of the Swans players. Yeah, Stephen Carey had two hands on it before Heatley got any on it. Carey going at it now. Ruse, Wakeland off the ground behind. Just can't snap all those half chances and kill the camera. Those, just those little goal line flurries just haven't been able to convert any of those. Brad Seymour again. We'll bring it back. That's what lies ahead of him. Checks all matchups. Finds Dyson. He looked initially towards Dunkley on the wing, but now goes straight down the ground. And that's a big ask for Bays. He had to beat a couple and also Nix. And the mark is taken by Thompson. Kicked a goal in the first quarter, Andrew Thompson. Very determined young player. To half four. Free ball. Harvey a chance. Robert Harvey. Caught, but shrugs the tackle with ease. Gives it to Nathan Burke. This is the one they need. And he's away again. Another behind. You see the strength of Robert Harvey. We know he's so hard to tackle, but he always keeps his elbows away from his body. So even if the tackler holds his body, he can still get his hands and arms and elbows clear to be able to feed off the handball. A good lesson for all players, that one. Johnny Stevens. Left the ground earlier with an injury, but appears to be OK now. This is a great finish, a good, tight contest. Dunkley with a roundhouse right, gains 25 metres, the race is on. Gillian Winmar, down they crash. Great recovery by Nicky Winmar. Over the top to Surikowski. Maybe this is at start. No, an excellent smother by Dunkley. Well done to Creswell. Round the body, Winmar shows desperation. Jones is there also. The ladder keeps it in play only for a moment to Surikowski. Going to go right down to the wire here at the SCG. Swans have managed just two behinds in this last quarter, both from the captain, Kelly. 
and two behinds to the Saints as well. Harvey, a centering kick to Lappin. Kick by Lappin, inside 50, low. Not this time. Brown spins into clean air. Up to the goal square, Everett. Oh, and spoiled by Dunkley, just as Everett was about to have a second grab at it. He'll swing in with a left foot, in towards half forward. The sun, a problem for some players. Creswell waits down. He wobbles a punt back to the middle, only as far as Jack Daniels. Back to... Uh, Shane. Shane Wakeland. Those Wakeland boys do it to me all the time. He goes down towards half forward. Dunkley caught. It spills free. An opportunity for low. Now Everett. Kick a goal. No, he's away to the right too. So they continue to do it in behind. 13-16 plays 16-12. Brad Seymour again to bring it in. He gains some ground for himself and then clears the 50. Lapping a good spoil on Ruse. Burke to Everett. Down in front. It spills to Brown. Smother. Healy. Through Brown's legs it goes. Dunkley. Oops. Revved up by the coach. A high ball to the edge of the square. Everett in the chop. And a big spoil. The ball goes out of bounds alongside the behind post for a throw in. So the Swans not out of trouble yet. Saints still in attack. And our crowd today, 39,287. So not far away from the magical 4-0. And they're seeing a crackerjack contest. 39,287. Yes, not the record. Three times they've topped 40. But the average this year is 35. It's a, it's a wonderful average. Here's Harvey. Here goes Harvey. Well, the odds surely must dictate that they're going to break through, Lee, soon. Yes, if, the, if there is such a thing, Sandy, I think you're right. And I think Robert Harvey, then he, he probably could have gone the extra five yeah. metres, but obviously didn't know who was on his tail, so he thought he'd better dispose of it. The crowd getting behind their side now. They realise it's tenth time. Thompson's kick is smothered. Kelly's in the thick of things. Captain Courageous is away. Sydney out of trouble towards Leo Barry. It's an open forward line he's got ahead of him. He's got Bays at hard forward. He's going to have to take a screamer over the top. And it's dropping short to Johnny Stevens. Now he'll swing round onto the left foot. Stevens, a short pass. It's not a good kick. Out comes O'Loughlin. Here's Bays. Strokes the tackle. Gives it to Maxfield. Maxfield, another hand pass away towards Shannon Grant, who's had a quiet day. And posts are behind. It was almost inevitable it was going to happen that the Swans were going to go forward because all the space, if they did get the ball out of defence, the they had all the space to run to and work to, but they've missed as well. In this last quarter, St Kilda have kicked four behinds, Sydney three behinds. Peckett to Daniels to Burke to Winmar. Uh, go over the top to Heat. They need a mark at half forward. Everett comes charging out. Well, Spider, well, he's kicked a couple. It's almost this is it, isn't it? He has to kick this goal. He's looked dangerous down there, Everett. Hasn't really marked too many, but he's just looked like he's always dangerous when he comes out in that marking duel against Kerry. This to make it a nine-point ball game. He shoots from 45 metres, Peter Everett, and they're still there. Three goals to make Spider, Peter Everett, and 14 to the Saints. Yes, this has been a gutsy display, whatever happens here for St Kilda, really. The game just didn't go for them in the first half, really. And they've just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And on one thing I think we know against St Kilda, they were able to score. They're a high-scoring team, always a chance of picking up the lead. Well, this game building an atmosphere now. The crowd of 39,000 roaring for Sydney. But uh, Zilla gets the Saints out of the middle. Mark dropped in defence. Wake on the hand pass. Heatley bats for goal and kicks it. Three points the margin. Well, that is just fantastic. Again, uh, terrific. Rowan Wharf came out, missed the mark or... Uh,
didn't got paid, got spoiled, whichever. But again, Stewie Lowe in the ruck, he's just been very competitive in there. Little Zilla. And really, it's just a contest there. And it was a good finish by Hoopley. Uh, but gee, they are coming home strong now. This is a fantastic game of football. Swans were terrific early and St Kilda there just kept plugging away to work themselves right back into it. The Sydney charts up. St Kilda supporters are here all turning their thousands. This is what it's all about. A three-point ball game with a ton of time. Who's going to win it out of the middle? Dyson, a little topo, comes wide towards centre wing. Nix, thought he might have heard a whistle, almost stopped. Barry, working hard, in trouble, under pressure. Nix beaten, taken away by Jones, tumbling a punt to half forward. But this time it's Matthews in the way. Back in towards the centre. He's got a player at the back and use him in Stevens. He gives it to Dyson. Dyson down towards half forward and Bays. Sydney looking for the quick reply. Mark Bays has not been accurate today. Doesn't try to kick the goal. Goes for the centering kick. Couple trying to claim it. And eventually taken through from behind. And Rutgers throwing the dice a little bit. He's put O'Loughlin to full forward. One out with Daniels, which again, Barry has come up the field and drawn Shanahan out. So this is an interesting tactical decision that St Kilda have to make. Do they leave the matchups, or do they think about putting Shanahan back to his most comfortable position at fullback? Take it again. The chart continues. Push pay. I think had a feeling he might have given the nudge, but thought I'll try and get away with it. He didn't. Dyson is a lovely kicker of the ball normally. Goes in towards the pocket region. An interesting leap by Leo Barry, and it's going to be a free kick to St Kilda. Oh, Mark Nash called player advantage then. Yep. <laughs> Taken by Winmar. Finds Peckett. 110 plays 106. Ten and a half minutes left. Peckett took it a long way. Heatley in the middle of the ground. Pretty open forward line. Wakeland's there, Ruse from behind. Brown flips the ball out. Healy, ball bouncing. So close. Ozzy Jones, did he kick it? The Saints in front. So Kilmer in front for the first time of the game. And hasn't Heatley, his work across half forward has been exceptional. Wakeland has gone back and finally to stop Ruse getting the ball basically and that's really important for the rebound Ozzy Jones, he hasn't really been in it much today Ozzy Jones but gee the goal to put him in front just goes to play and everybody's chance comes Well the Saints in front for the first time today, they lead by two points, a goal from centimetres out by Ozzy Jones Cook out of the middle Wakeland Shane Good hand pass to Burke. Saints have lifted and starting to get value on the scoreboard now. Hurried kick by Nix. Comes down to Maxfield. Great shot across the face, though. And a behind for Stewie Maxfield, which reduces the margin to one point in favour of St Kilda with nine and a half minutes left. We saw that flurry back in the midfield there. Ozzy Jones, of course, just kicked the goal. That was a good part. But he had to keep his body behind the ball. Hard when it's a bouncing ball, but he just let the thing get behind him. That enabled Sydney to go forward. Peggett to win now. Almost slow motion. Now he's got to get a wriggle on. Well, that was lucky. That was lucky. Burke to Peggett. He runs away from Bayes. Goes oh. in towards Brown. That's an interesting hand pass. Wolf's got it, but that's a good tackle by Peckett. Real danger there of Wolf streaming down the ground. Say that again. If the tackle had been broken, the Swans were yep. clear. But it wasn't broken. Terrific play then by Peckett. Stafford. Straight to Winmar, wider to Harvard, in trouble. Cook trying to lift Troy Cook, 
tries to get it out. Burke soccer's off the ground, into the middle of Wardzilla. He gives it away to Stewie Lowe. Stewie is 52 metres out. It's a high drop punt. It's in towards full forward, away towards the left and through for behind. I mean, that's really where Stuart Lowe, he should feed the ball off. He's ran to the 50 metre mark, but he's just in the desperation to try and win the game for your team. You just really don't play the percentages. Wakeland was dropping clear. He was there to be used. Seymour brings it in to Stephen Carey. Carey goes wide. In towards the middle. Stevens not paid the mark. Winmar tries to go to Everett. Interesting. Peatley has had a big second half. Walk towards the line. Does it well. Maxfield marks on centre wing. Only as far as Shanahan. St Kilda go charging forward again. In the half board. Stuart Lowe takes the mark. 45 metres out directly in front. So low to have a shot. Well, well, this is the time, is it, to stand up and be counted. Shanahan, terrific job to get the front spot. All of a sudden, under pressure, the kicks aren't really going where you want them to. That was just simply stand your ground, which Dewey Lowe does. He'll be kicking from almost 50 metres, probably 45 metres. There's some theory that the 50 metre mark in the SCG <laughs> is not quite 50, but it's still going to be a pretty long kick. He stood up to the pressure today, Stuart Lowe. He's kicked a couple of goals when he's had the chance. This will test him because this is pretty much his maximum kicking distance to keep it accurate. But his kicking has improved dramatically over the years. And the Saints on a roll. 46 metres. The drop punt. Well, he's made a liar out of lead. He's done it with ease. He's done it with ease. No, he didn't make a liar out of me, Sandy, because today he is standing up, Stuart Lowe. He's had three shots today on that pressure distance and he's kicked the three. It was a wobbly old kick, but it's given them a little bit of a buffer now. Uh, St Kilda with an eight point margin but Stewie Lowe's in the rough dropping into centre half forward has been an exceptional contributor Sydney one goal five in the last quarter Saints four five Creswell floats one Harvey takes it and bursts out of the middle breaks the tackle gets to the 50 runs into trouble Nicks for the Swans. Creswell. Players out in the open. Stevens busts the tackle. Gets support from Dyson. Long to pull forward. Bates gets underneath it. Shanahan for the Saints. Out wide to Ozzy Jones. Wearing his badge of honour from earlier in the game. Accidental kick to the head. Kick by Jones to the 50. Wakeland. Ruse in front. Dunkley in support. The kick to centre half forward. Pumped away by Shanahan, the ball underfoot. And the umpire will ball it up on the 50. And again, uh, early in the in the match, the rotation of the Swans forward line was really causing problems, and they got it going again. At the moment, Kelly's gone forward to play at uh, precisely full forward against Thompson. It's a cordon at the St Kilda defence. Keep their composure in this real tight situation. Umpire's gone down, but Jones goes on with the job. Maxfield's in the middle. It's clean ball. Seymour. And a bounce in the centre. The bounce of the ball just tells it now. You could almost tell in that hard centre pitch that ball was going to elude the Swans player coming forward. It's just the pressure now. Every player really has got the adrenaline pumping. It's a question of can you control your physical and your mental emotions under this type of situation. St Kilda by eight points. Stewie Lowe, mighty fist. Robert Harvey hasn't stopped running. Into the pocket. Kick is good. In fact, it was perfect. Healy, smothered, will go again. The pick tries to pick up the spinning top. Now does, and just manages it behind. It's really, that was really, I think, an example where Healy hurried himself. He saw a secured a player on clear in the forward 50, but then he just hurried himself. When you got the lead, play with a bit of percentage. Oh, Dale Lewis, worrying times now. Can they come back? 
Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think we can. Uh, Sandy, we've done it in the past before, but I don't think we've got the run at the moment. The St Kilda have got runners everywhere and look the fresher side. Creswell's kick was interesting. Now maybe a chance for Nick Snow. He had it and lost it. Handled like a hot potato. And there'll be a bounce at half four. Young Sydney supporter hoping they can get up. Saints lost four of their first five games. And we're down second last on the ladder. Now look at them. They might break this winning run by Sydney in Sydney. Ozzy Jones on the bounce. Out to Robert Harvey. The swarm unsuccessful this time. Ball against Robert Harvey. What hope did he have? I don't know whether I'd say that was a prior opportunity, Luke. Umpires have got to keep their composure too, John. Yes. You don't see Harvey pinned with it too often. Thompson lost control of it. Cook for the Swans keeps his footing against Cripps. Centering kick, well played Cook. Winmar there. Can't take the mark. Burke tunnels it. Inside 50 for Sydney, but Shanahan's hand pass out to Lowe. Good kick by Stewie Lowe to Healy. Centre wing. Under four minutes left. And St Kilda in front, a juggle by Wakeland. Brown from the pocket. Couldn't hook it back far enough, and through it goes for a behind. Tony Brown's first score for the day. Just quickly, John, umpires in the excitement of this, they, they, they get the adrenaline pumping too in these tight finishes. Yeah, yeah, certainly the adrenaline's pumping, but Dave Howlett's very experienced, and you'd like to think that he'd remain composed even in this environment. Well, Sydney running out of time fast. Over the head of Statman it goes. Kelly tries to find someone. They need at least a goal to give them a lift. Creswell may provide the answer. Flat looking back to and sound stuck through the back. They're still there. Darren Creswell gets his third. His 13th of the year. Four points, the margin. And it's just the rebound out of defence on the kick-ins there. That's where the Swan, all the space is in the Swan's forward line. So they're going to be able to run through half forward if they can get possessions. Here's St Kilda. That's, the ball just went forward, forward, forward football under pressure. Well, the goal by Creswell was the Swans' first goal in this final term. They need another one to win the game. Three minutes remaining. St Kilda by four points. Indecisive in the middle. Creswell got a fist to it. Cook is there. Cook to pull forward. Two against two. No mark. Play on. Ball up. Well, the two Swans players both had a touch. <laughs> and both wanted the mark. <laughs> the crowd thought I'd just give it to one of them. Take a pick. Clearly not a mark. Clearly, yeah. Uh, two mark, mark but no, no team, one individual. A team mark. They haven't, they haven't given those yet. Low hits it out, but straight to Creswell. Can he do it again? Not this time. <laughs> oh, everyone was out of their seats. Martin is three points here with two and a half minutes left. Imagine the pressure on Justin Peggett at the moment. He's got the time to kick the ball in. He hasn't got all day. Just got to assess his options. Go to Stuart Lowe. Pretty good get out. Bays floats over the top. Burke waits down in front. And it wouldn't have surprised me then if he took it over. But he's kept it in play and moved it towards the centre wing. St Kilda Mark Payne, not to, not to run more. And precious seconds continue to tick away, Dale Lewis. Time is running out, Louis. Yes, Andy, um, I thought Cruiser might have done it again for us yeah. there, but um, hopefully we can get a rebound out of defence here and get one more force into attack. Well, this could be one of the last rolls of the dice as Ozzy Jones belts it forward and finishes over the line. Two minutes remaining. Three points the margin. Sydney, of course, looking for a big finish to the season. I'd like as many finals as possible up here, but this loss could have Somewhat of a psychological effect on that. Here's Harvey in towards full forward. Ruse. Now the attack's got to start from here. Paul Ruse towards O'Loughlin and Maxfield. Peckett flicks it back. 
And Lachlan takes it. He's in trouble. Healy a chance for St Kilda. Round the body, but oh. straight back to Ruse. Again, it's just a little bit lack of composure by the inexperienced player. Just trying too hard instead of just taking his time and setting up. Oh, not a good left foot by Paul Ruse. A tired kick by the 332-game veteran. On the other side of the coin, when you're behind, you have to take the risk. That's yep. the difference. It was a poor execution uh, by Ruse, but he has to try and get the ball going quickly. On the time clock, it's 28 and a half minutes, so you never know how long it is to go. Young boy from Leopold, Tony Brown. A long bomb by Brown has just about sealed it for St Kilda. What's the umpire going to say? I think it's there. Oh, <laughs> one behind. Talk about drama. <laughs> well, I think everybody else oh. thought it was a goal except the goal umpire. Yeah. He's waiting to see what's going on. It's either a goal or behind or out of bounds. The field umpire is still talking to him. It didn't touch hands. I think the boundary umpire was direction. coming in for his bit, John. I think it's got to be a what? goal. I think the boundary umpire is going to say it was a goal. Here we see it again, and clearly it's it's touched and pushed forward. It doesn't continue in the direction of the kick, so it's either a goal or it's nothing. It's still a behind, <laughs> I'm telling you. I've just seen well, it goes on the scoreboard and that's all it counts. The reason that would be is Andrew Coates has consulted the goal umpire at the end of the day. It is the goal umpire's decision and he's refused to change his mind. 50 seconds <laughs> left and the Swans need a goal to win it. They trail by four points. Towards the other Ooh. side, Lowe met head on and Stewie Lowe will take a free kick. Advantage. It spills out to Zilla. Long to the goal square. Wakeland's there. Spills off. Leppard. Great shot. That's the winner. The Saints have won. Look at it. They are wrapped. And there's still 27 seconds to go. Oh, this has just been a fantastic performance by St Kilda, hasn't it? That, as I said, things didn't go with them early, but they kept hanging in. But if they played this second second half out strong, I've got the, the home crowd that kept them out of the game because they're the ones been doing the scoring. And really, uh, Stuart Lowe in the ruck has been fantastic. Finally, they've put Edward back in for this last 30 seconds. But Larry's second half has been tremendous. Fantastic. Out of the middle, Troy Cook tries to get the hand pass wide. Stephen Carey swung in a 360, but he gets it to centre wing, and the mark is taken by Stevens. Stevens looks to half forward. Mooney and Coa down there. Mooney's the first to recover. Tries to sucker off the ground. It goes high. Oh, Lachlan's in the pocket. He needs help. Short little chip is OK. Finds Kelly. He's called to play on. The captain goes. Shoots towards goal, it matters not. He's missed, and St Kilda has won an absolute thriller. Well, I'll tell you what, Sandy, you're just, you're just happy to be part of the game, aren't you? This has been fantastic. What a finish. The run has been broken here at the SCG by St Kilda.